XML as a launch file format was kind of an afterthought. So the Python version, um, yeah, it, it just has more functionality in general. And there are features that have been implemented in the Python version that are not yet available in XML. Uh, I highly recommend using an existing example launch file as a template to start working with uh, Python launch files because there is a lot of stuff that without a reference, sorry, are you raising your hand? Oh, seeing things out of the corner of my eye. Um, there's a lot of stuff in, in Python launch files that uh, without having a long background in understanding all of the Python modules that you can use in a launch file, it's really hard to find. So um, the example that I'm gonna have you follow is from uh, this path within Auto or Auto. So um, I recommend in Auto or Auto going into source, launch, Auto or demos, launch. And you'll actually see a whole bunch of launch files in here. And these are the launch files that AutoWare has created as uh, demo applications that can be run starting up a bunch of different nodes within AutoWare. Um, the, probably one of the simpler ones and uh, one that doesn't have any dependencies on other launch files, because you can include the contents of one launch file in another launch file, um, is the, the LiDAR detection core LGSVL. So we'll just kind of quickly run through the contents of this launch file and, and what each part of it does. If you submit a uh, merge request to Upstream Autoware, it's required that you have this um, copyright block at the top of every file that you work on. So it has to have a copyright. The copyright can be copyright you. It doesn't have to be the Autoware Foundation um, or whatever business you're working for or your university, whatever you want. But the rest of this up to this line that says limitations under the license, this is all the Apache 2.0 license. And this part is required because everything that's released under AutoWare is under the Apache 2.0 license for a lot of legal reasons. The code developed by tier four part, you can drop that if you're working on code. Uh, there will then always be a um, description block talking about the purpose of the launch file. So in this case, this launch file launches all the nodes necessary to produce detected objects, uh, uses raw LiDAR points from the SVL simulator, um, does not launch RVIS. It's meant to be included in other launch files that require LiDAR object detection. So just describe what the launch file does and use the triple double quotes to open and close it. Um, how many of you have written in Python before? Most people, but not everybody. Okay. Uh, these sections up top are to tell it what other Python modules you want to use in this file. Uh, the import OS one is a standard OS library that lets you do things like creating file paths and modifying OS file or making OS calls, that sort of stuff. The rest of these are, oops, are all uh, raw specific uh, module includes. So the Ament index Python allows you to find packages that are within the ROS uh, package index. So you can do things like say, I want to include this launch file from this other package. And you use Ament index Python to look up the location of that other package. Uh, launch substitutions allows you to do things like, I want to create an argument uh, for my launch file that people can put in a value for. And then I'm going to substitute that in other places in my launch file. Um, launch ROS is where most of the uh, ROS specific calls are. So launch is a generic launch, um, uh, launch architecture. So you can launch uh, other executables that are not ROS related with just the launch package. But launch ROS is specific to launching ROS nodes and ROS services and making service calls and that sort of stuff. And then um, the launch.actions uh, import shutdown, that just allows you to 
uh, attach a, an event to a node shutting down. And then the standard contents of a launch file is the definition of the generate launch description function. And that generate launch description function has to return a launch.launch .launch description object. So the launch.launch .launch description object includes an array of the list of objects that you want to launch in this launch file. Those can be arguments, those can be nodes, they can be lifecycle nodes, they can be executables, anything you want to run has to be in this, this array, or at least the, the variable name that you assign to it has to be in this array. So everything before the return call is usually the list of things that you want to run and the definitions of those. So uh, this is a pretty good example. Um, Rayground classifier is one of the nodes that we want to run in this. So they create a variable called Rayground classifier and it is of type node. And then node has all of these parameters associated with it. The executable is the actual name of the node that you want to run. The name is the arbitrary name that you want to give that node while it's running. Uh, namespace is uh, when you run a ROS node, you can tell it, I want all of the node's topics and the node's services and the node itself to have this prefix in front of it. So when this node runs, it will be listed as slash LIDARs slash RayGround classifier. Uh, this is uh, an argument called on exit, which allows you to tie a function that you want to call on the shutdown of that, that node. Um, that one's pretty uncommon. Uh, not a lot of people use that. Package is the package name that you want to find that executable in. And that is required in order to find an executable that exists outside this package. Um, the parameters list is an array of parameters that you want to pass to the node. In this case, they're actually passing the path to a parameters YAML file. And the get param file function uses that uh, amend index Python that I was talking about. So it uses the function get package share directory from amend index Python to get the path to the share directory for the package that you pass to it. And then it combines that with uh, a folder name called param, and then the file name that you're looking for inside that package. So once get param file gets run, it will spit out the path to that file, and that is what gets passed into parameters. You can also pass in like individual tuples of parameters that you want to assign to the node. So um, let's see if there's an example of that in here. No, this one, this one just uses uh, YAML files for defining all the parameters. But you would do it very similarly to, to these remappings. In a set of parentheses, you have the parameter name. And then instead of a comma here, you would have a colon. And then the, the, uh, the value you want to pass for that parameter. And then the remappings are renamings of topics or services that are on that node to some other name. So for example, in this case, uh, the point cloud fusion node, uh, by default, the data that it reads in is gonna be on a topic called, out, or sorry, the data it puts out is gonna be on a topic called output topic, but you generally need to rename those topics so that you can hook nodes together because the, they come with generic names usually. And so this is remapping output topic to points filter. And then you can see right below that in the ray ground classifier, this is remapping points in to points filtered so that it can take the output of one node, pass it to the next one. And then the output of the ray ground classifier will go into Euclidean clustering. And in this case, it's a the points non-ground topic, which is not being remapped. It's just one of the default topics from the ray ground classifier. So we are going to launch several nodes that we need in order to talk to the data speed drive by wire system on the Lincoln and KZ. Um, so we're going to start by essentially just uh, uh, in order to, to, to save this launch file to somewhere that we have access to and that we can modify, 
and to keep it separate from modifying auto where auto, because this is all stuff specific to our use case. It doesn't need to go in auto where auto in itself. We are going to create a new repository and a new package of our own that will be in the source external folder. And we're going to store our launch file and all our configuration files in there. Uh, did I skip that? Oh, here we go. Create a package for your vehicle. <laughs> so there's a utility that is available in AutoWare Auto called AutoWare Auto Create Package. Um, there is a standard ROS way of creating a new package as well. Um, just like you can use ROS2 topic echo or ROS2, you know, whatever uh, verb plus something else, there is a ROS2 package create, which will create a, a standard templated package. AutoWare has its own templating package, and it includes uh, a lot more structure and a lot more AutoWare specific stuff. So the AutoWare auto create package is generally the preferred method for creating a package in AutoWare auto. So to do that, inside your AutoWare auto folder, um, CD into source external. And then for, for your terminal to know about all the packages that are available at AutoWare auto, you have to source the bash RC file that or sorry, the bash file that uh, was created during the build. So it gets all the environmental variables and knows where everything is. Um, so you could have done that from AutoWare Auto, but you can also do it from here just using a little, a little uh, dot dot trickery. So in your terminal inside source external, you can type source space. And then we want a file that's two folders up. So you can do dot dot slash dot dot. And then it's inside the install folder. So slash install slash setup.bash. And that should give you no errors and not return anything. But you can actually verify that it worked by, for example, typing echo and then dollar sign uh, Ross underscore uh, no. Sorry, just a second. Nope, none of those. I think this will work. One second, sorry. So one way you can do it is uh, ROS2 PKG list. And if you do ROS package list, it will give you all of the packages that, uh, that this environment knows about. And you can see that some of these, um, for example, like turtle sim is one that, that you use during the, the ROS tutorials. But there are others in here like TVM utility, TVM vendor. Um, and if you scroll all the way to the top, there should be a bunch of autoware underscore ones as well. Yeah, there we go. So this lets you know that your environment now knows about all of the autoware packages that were built during your, your Colcon build. And one of those is gonna be autoware auto create package. So inside source external to create your, uh, your package, you run ROS2 run. And then the name of the package, which is going to be AutoWare Auto Create Package. And this will, if your environment is set up correctly, this should auto complete. So if you just type AutoWare Auto CRE and then hit tab, it should auto complete create package. And then if you want to find out what nodes or executables are available within a package, uh, after you have the package name in there, you can hit tab again twice. And it will list any of the scripts or nodes that are available to run in that package. And main.py is the one that we're going to use for this. Um, there are a bunch of arguments that you have to pass to main.py to create your package because it needs to know things like your node name or your package name, maintainer, email address, etc. And I'm never able to remember all those off the top of my head. So if you just run main.py without any 
arguments, it'll tell you the syntax of, the, of what you need to run. So we're gonna run it again, but add, uh, we can leave destination blank because if you leave it blank, it will just create it in the current folder. But we do need to add dash dash pkg dash name. And we'll create a package uh, just called like bootcamp underscore launch. And then dash dash maintainer. And here you'll put your own name in double quotes. Dash dash email, your email address. And then dash dash description. And the description of the package in double quotes. Um, I'm just gonna call this uh, launch package for bootcamp. And then once you've entered all of that, if it all was entered correctly, you should get package bootcamp launch has been generated in dot. And even though it shows two dots here, it actually means the current folder because one of them is a period. <laughs> Example of bad messages. So now if you type ls, you should have a bootcamp launch file or folder in this package. Package in this folder. Anybody have any issues with that one? Cool. All right, so let's CD into the bootcamp launch folder and see what was created. So the template that's used for AutoWare Auto Create Package is actually geared towards uh, C++ packages. Um, that's probably something that's also worth mentioning is the there are uh, developer requirements and guidelines that are associated with AutoWare Auto. One of those guidelines is uh, if you're creating a package that is meant to be used in any sort of real-time pipeline, um, any uh, data processing, any um, uh, basically anything that's not launch files or utility scripts, then it needs to be written in C++. If it is just utility scripts or just launch files or just parameter files, you can use YAML or Python or whatever you want. But if it's running real time as part of the architecture, it needs to be in C++. Um, and this is mostly for performance reasons. Uh, Python just is an interpreted language. It just doesn't run as quickly on embedded systems. So C++ is, uh, is the requirement there. But because we are creating a package that's only going to have launch files and parameter files in it, and not our own code, we can get rid of some of the junk that gets, a, gets created automatically as part of this template. So things like the include folder, uh, the source folder, the test folder, those can all go away because those all just have C++ code in them. So you can do rm-r for recursive, and then include SRC and test. And then if you LL or LS again, you should see those, those being removed. Okay. For the rest of the folders and for the structure of the folders, uh, there are developer guidelines that were generated by Ross uh, that essentially tell you what the files in a, in a package should look like. Um, so these are the, the standard, pack, uh, standard folder names that should exist within uh, a package that is being, you don't have to strictly stick to these guidelines if you're just developing your own packages and you're not gonna be sending them to anybody else 
But if it's a ROS package and it's going to be on the build farm or it's going to be an autoware, people expect to see these folders in there if you're using them. So um, the source folder that we just removed is for all of the C++ codes or CPP files. Uh, any header files for your C++ go in include slash the package name. And the reason for that is if you are using a header file from someone else's package, you want to make sure there aren't any naming conflicts. So to include that, you would do include then their package name slash the header file. Uh, if you are making a Python package and you have Python scripts that you want installed, you create a folder inside your package that is named the same as your package because that gets created as a Python module. And then inside there, you include your Python files. The test folder will contain all automated tests. Um, you can have automated tests, which are uh, C++ utilizing gtest. You can have um, uh, ROS unit tests, which are made in an XML file. You can have automated tests in Python. So all of those, regardless of what language they're using, go in the test folder. Um, we don't need any because we're just creating launch files. So no big deal. Uh, config is going to be the name of the folder where you put your parameter files. You will see in a lot of cases that people have created a folder called param. Um, that is non-standard. Uh, it just gets done a lot because people don't go and like reference the documentation every time. But it should be that within auto or auto, at least, the config file folder should be where all of the parameter files and rviz config files are. Uh, doc contains all documentation. Um, the exception to that in AutoWare is there's a folder called design, which includes at least one design file talking about the purpose for this package and any known limitations, associated issues, bugs, uh, that sort of stuff. Additional docs like API documentation would be in a docs folder or doc singular. Um, if there are launch files in your package, which there will be for ours, there should be a launch folder. There's going to be a package.xml file in every ROS package, and we will edit that because we need to modify some stuff in it for this package. Um, but that essentially is what ROS dep uses to identify all the dependencies that your package depends on. And it's also used by CMake to figure out what your package depends on. Uh, CMake lists.txt. Uh, is a standard CMake file if you're using CMake as your build environment. Um, AutoWare mandates CMake as the build environment. You cannot submit a pure Python package to AutoWare Auto. It has to have a CMake file. So the setup.py file that they recommend here doesn't apply to AutoWare. Um, setup.py is an alternative. If you're making a pure Python package and you want all the installation and everything to be done by Python, then you use setup.py. But um, AutoWare mandates CMake, so you don't have to worry about that one. Readme is generally a good idea, especially if it's the only package that you're going to have in a repository on, on GitLab or GitHub, um, because it, you know, on GitHub or GitLab, it automatically renders it. It's nice to just see an overview of what the package is doing, and et cetera. Um, contributing, same way. It just gives you a description of if you're going to contribute to this repository, here are the things you should follow. Here are the things you should be doing. Um, for for AutoWare, we don't have uh, any of these four last files, README, Contributing, License, or Change Log, because there is a master version of those at the very base of the repository. And that applies to every package that's part of AutoWare Auto. So if you're submitting this to AutoWare Auto, you don't have to worry about them. But if you're keeping it as a separate repository and maintaining it yourself, you usually want to have those files in there. Um, again, everything in AutoWare Auto is under the Apache 2.0 license, so uh, you can copy that if you want to into your repository. And then the change log um, doesn't apply to AutoWare Auto, but if you are making a package that you want to release on the ROS build farm, a change log is required. And there's an automated tool uh, called uh, Cat Can Generate Change Log, which will generate this for you based on the commit messages that you've done in the repository up to that point.
All right, so that's the folder structure that we're going for. Um, first thing we will do is edit the package.xml file. And this will define all the dependencies that our launch file is going to depend on. So use your favorite editor, whatever you want. I'm going to use Vim and open the package.xml file. Yeah. It says it's not there. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. This is uh, this is a bug that was fun. Um, uh, any references on versus versus? Yeah, so they actually just said. Yeah. Okay, all right. So okay, okay. okay. So we'll. Well, we'll go ahead and make sure that it's fully up. So, um, you can check out this first. And um, do uh, kit switch mode. Yes. Uh, add. Trace upstream. Trace log. Um, get at. GIC. At symbol. Uh, no, uh, auto work partition. Flash auto work auto. Flash auto work auto. Stop it. Okay, so you get that touch. So um, go back to the auto Do a get check out of what we're And then do get the trace. All right. Um, remove the uh, build. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I saw right. some recent clips on that. So right. I saw I saw some recent clips on that. So So yeah, you when you run full code, you're gonna have to add that oh, okay. dash 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 and then you get it uh in that All right, so we're gonna remove a couple of things from here and add a few others. Um so to describe the packages that this currently depends on and, and what they do, uh, a build tool depend is a package that this package depends on only during the build process. So it's nothing that you would need to 
um, link against, nothing that you would need to use while running the package. It's something that only has to be used during the build process, will never be used again. So build tool depends are pretty rare, um, which is why there's only two of them here. Ament CMake Auto, which is a package that makes, um, makes the CMake file a lot simpler and easier to work with in ROS. And we'll, we'll get into that uh, a little bit later. And then AutoWare Auto CMake, which is just some CMake specific or CMake files that are specific to AutoWare, adds a couple of extra macros and um, lets you link against some stuff that's in AutoWare really easily in CMake. Depend is kind of a depend is kind of a catch-all. Um, the depend tag actually means uh, build depend, uh, exec depend and um, build export depend. So there are several tags that you're getting rid of just by using the depend tag, but it allows you to easily depend on a package that you know that you're going to use during build time and during runtime, and to do it with just one tag. In our case, since we are not going to be building any packages that need C++ uh, or Python, we can get rid of both of these lines that have depends here. So, just go ahead and delete both of those. And then you could also delete the test depend on immense CMake gtest because we're not using gtest, which again is a C++ thing. So now you should have just the two build tool depends and the two de test depends on immensely auto and immensely common. So the test depends uh, are packages that your package depends on for running tests. We do want these two test dependencies in here because this gives you some automatic linter tests that will make sure that your launch files and your XML file and your CMake file are all formatted correctly. And if you run the tests and it's not formatted correctly, it'll show you the errors and what you need to fix to format them correctly. Um, so we leave those on pretty much every package. Now we're going to add some exec depends. Because we're creating launch files, um, exec depend tells, uh, tells ROSDEP that this package depends on those only when you're running something inside the package. So you can't put something into exec depend that you're going to depend on when you build the package. But we don't really have a build step because we're just creating launch files that, that run Python. So um, we are going to add some new lines in here. Again, indentation is really important here, so make sure you've got two spaces and not a tab. And we are going to create an exec depend. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, sure. Is that better? So we want to exec depend on the packages that we know we're going to be running nodes from. So um, the first one is going to be a uh, new package that has been worked on recently. Actually, we'll figure that one out in a minute. <laughs> um, the, we, uh, there's been development ongoing for creating a data speed interface to be able to talk from AutoWare to the data speed drive-by-wire driver. But we've already got at least the data speed drive-by-wire driver in here. And we know we're going to need to run that to be able to communicate with the drive-by-wire system. So we need to find the package name for the uh, uh, data speed drive-by-wire driver. And that's going to be in source external, where we stuck the data speed packages. Uh, and in this case, we're going to be talking to a Ford vehicle, um, which is the Lincoln MKZ. Um, for some reason, data speed has broken up all of their drive-by-wire drivers based on vehicle manufacturer. Um, nobody else in the industry does that. They've all pretty much got one driver that works with every drive-by-wire system, no matter what vehicle manufacturer it's on. But uh, the one we're going to be using is in the DBW Ford CAN package. So we know that we need to depend on DBW Ford CAN in order to run that. So we'll add the exec depend for DBW Ford can. See. 
And for now, that's all we're going to do with the with the package.xml file. Especially in AutoWare, it is important that you keep the package XML file updated. Um, if you're looking at packages which are not part of AutoWare and uh, packages specifically that don't use immense CMake Auto, the kind of default way to create a ROS package has you list all the dependencies in the package.xml file. But then in your CMake file, it also wants you to find package, every package that you're looking for. Immense CMake Auto allows you to run one command, which will go parse the XML file and figure all of that out. So you don't have to find package, every package you're looking for. So you won't see that in, uh, in AutoWare because we use Immense CMake Auto everywhere. But in a lot of other packages, you will see that. So you have to keep updated both the package.xml list and the CMake list. So go ahead and uh, save and close your package.xml file. And then we will start on the CMake lists text file. So again, that uh, copyright block that I was talking about, even in your CMake file, um, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove this part and make it copyright my company. You can put your own name there. CMake list. Um, and we'll just kind of go through a couple of these items in here. Um, CMake minimum required version is going to be the same on every uh, specific version of ROS. So for example, ROS Foxy requires CMake version 3.5. Every ROS Foxy package will require a CMake version 3.5. Um, I think so far, everything up to ROS Galactic has required 3.5. Uh, the next version, Ross Humble, will require a newer version of CMake because it actually uh, will require a new version of Ubuntu. Um, so the next the next version coming out, Humble Hawks Bill, uh, will be on Ubuntu 22, 2204. Uh, you then have the project declaration, which just tells it the name of the package. This name has to match the one that's in the XML file for your package name. If it does not, and you try to build the package, it'll give you an error. So you'll know right away what happened. This is the part I was talking about with the find packaging. When you're using immense CMake Auto, you only need to find package, immense CMake Auto, and then you can run immense auto find build dependencies. And that will go and parse the XML file and figure everything out for you so you don't have to find package every single thing again. Uh, these set calls are really just um, creating some CMake variables, but since we are not using uh, any of these files, because we're not using C++ for this, you can just get rid of all of these set lines. And then right below that is generating a library, um, which again is a C++ thing or a Python thing, whatever language you're using. And we're not doing that, so we can get rid of all of that as well. Same thing for both of these set lines and the generating component node and the auto or set compile options. Basically everything all the way down to the testing section you can get rid of. Then inside the testing block, um, we have the find package amend lint auto, which was one of the two testing packages that we de depend on and then amend lint auto find test dependencies. This does the same thing as amend CMake auto find build dependencies, but for test dependencies. So you wanna keep those two because that is what triggers the linters to be run for your tests. But everything below that inside the testing block, you can get rid of down to the end if. And then finally, the last statement you'll have in here is a mint auto package. So a mint auto package does all of the cleanup tasks and 
uh, tells Ament um, what packages your package depends on, so that if another package depends on this one, it can go up the dependency chain and figure out all of the dependencies all the way back to the beginning. And then you can provide an argument to it called install to share, which allows you to install specific files or folders from your package when the package is built. So this tells it anything in the launch folder, I want to get installed as part of this package so that I have access to it with commands like ROS2 run or ROS2 launch. So your entire CMake list file should just be the copyright header and then these few lines. And that's all you need for a launch, a launch package. All right, save and close that. And then an autoware specific file is the design pack, uh, the design file. So you'll have a design folder in here. And inside the design folder, you'll find one file, which is the name of your package dash design.md. Uh, if you are submitting this package to autoware for uh, an upstream merge request, you want to fill out this design file. Um, I'll just go through a couple of things in it real quick, but we don't really need to fill it out for our use cases here. So this includes the name of your package, uh, a description, and you should replace this with whatever the description of your package is, the purpose or use cases for your package, uh, design details about the structure of your package, what algorithms you used, uh, how, it can, how it's meant to connect to other packages, that sort of thing, um, assumptions and known limitations, documentation of the inputs and outputs at, or, and or API. So if this is a uh, package that just generates a library that's meant to be used for like an algorithm for running something in Autoware, um, you won't have any ROS nodes or ROS topics that you need to run, but you should define the public functions that are available in your API so that other people know how to use it in this document. If you do have ROS nodes, in here, you should define any parameters that they take, any topics that they publish, that sort of thing. Um, inner workings or algorithms, if applicable, error detection and handling. So whether you pass back uh, uh, return codes from your functions or whether you uh, use exceptions or however you handle that, um, you should describe it here. Security considerations are important. However, you'll find that within Autoware, um, pretty much every package has a to-do in this section that says, waiting for a security analysis. Um, for now, it's fine to just put that in your package if that's what you're doing as well. But there are a lot of cases where you may be interacting with, for example, a CAN API or um, an ethernet API or, or some other method of communication. And you probably want to spell out that this node makes assumptions about the API that we're using, that it's going to be this level of safety. And, you know, for example, if you're talking about a CAN interface, you can make the assumption that if someone has physical access to the CAN bus, all bets are off. Security really isn't a thing because you can decode CAN messages without encryption with, with no issue. So your, your node would really only need to be as safe as the API that you use underneath it, right? Um, references and external links, uh, future extensions, unimplemented parts, and related issues. Related issues usually at least get some mention in here because in general, if you are working on a new feature or trying to fix a bug within Autoware, there should be an issue associated with it. So the first thing you should do before you write any code is go to the issues list create a new issue saying I'm working on this feature or I'm fixing this bug so that when they do a software working group meeting, people can go through that and see this is what's currently being worked on. And then you would link to that here. Okay. Um, so I guess the, the last thing really is to start working on our launch file. Uh, so you can CD into the launch folder and there will automatically be a bootcamp launch uh, dot launch dot pi and 
edit that file with your favorite text editor. And again, this is kind of designed for that template of a C++ uh, package. So it's gonna have some stuff in it for us to remove. Um, so I'll start, I start by updating the, the copyright. And then um, you should update the, the description of the launch file. So I'm just going to put launch file for vehicle for AutoWare Bootcamp. You can get rid of this note, does not work in ROS2 dashing. Um, dashing is actually not supported anymore, so that should really be removed from the, uh, from the template, but and if, any, if we run across any of those things and any of you feel like fixing it, not aware, please go for it. And then in this case, um, this launch file uses something called a composable node container. We haven't really talked about composable nodes, but the gist of it is it allows you to run multiple ROS nodes in a single process on your PC. And the main advantage of that is speed of transferring messages. So you don't have to go down all the way to the networking layer to pass the message across to another node. You can just pass it in memory directly from one to the other using multiple nodes in the same process. But we are not launching uh, any composable nodes. We are, we are just run, launching reg, regular nodes. Um, so we can get rid of this composable node container completely. And we actually aren't gonna use either of these composable node container or composable node. So we can get rid of those imports as well. Now we are gonna use uh, a node. So we have to import the node module from the package um, launch. So for this, I'm gonna start using the, the example that I was referencing before. It's a lot easier to copy and paste that stuff than it is to try and remember all of it. And that example was in source launch autoware demos launch. And it was the LiDAR detection core LGSVL. So since this launch file is pretty simple and has a lot of the things that we want to be able to use in it, uh, I know that I'm essentially going to be using everything except the, the shutdown function. So I'm just going to grab all three or all five of these lines here from import OS all the way down to from launch ROS actions import node. And I'm going to copy those and stick them in my launch file. And that will actually replace the, the import launch uh, line as well. So these are the only ones you need at the top for now. And then I also know that we're going to be using a uh, parameters YAML file. And the easiest way to get that is by using this get param file function that was written uh, in the other launch file. So I'm just going to grab the whole get param file function and stick that in my launch file as well. And that will go before the generate launch description. All right. 
Yeah. Uh, in this case, it doesn't. Um, in some languages, you have to have the, the, the function defined before you can use it later. But in Python, since it's a pre-interpreted language, it reads the entire file. So it already knows that it exists before you get to it. So um, yeah, so this part, it doesn't, the order doesn't matter. Uh, the order of imports versus function definitions does matter though. So you have to have the imports up top. And uh, uh, when we get to running cold contest on this, the Python linter will tell you if you got it wrong. Okay. So uh, the next thing we want to do in the launch file is we want to be able to launch a node. Uh, in this case, we want to launch a, uh, a node from the uh, data speed for DBW can package. Um, in my opinion, if you are working with a package that you're not familiar with and you need to know the node names, to me, the easiest way to do that is just to go to the CMake list file for that package because that's where it defines the, the nodes you're going to build. So it's the easiest source to find the, the package or the node names. So I'm going to go over to, uh, to source external data speed. And I'm going to go into the DBW Ford CAN package. And then I'm going to look at the contents of the CMake list file. So here you can see an example of what I was talking about if you don't use uh, a meant CMake auto. You have to find package every single dependency in here that is also in your package XML file. So a meant CMake auto is a big time saver. Talking about include directories or CSMP components. Okay. So um, this actually uses a composable node and the RCLCPP components register node macro is what defines the name of the executable that's gonna come out of that. Um, so the executable name in this case is dbw node and that's the one that we wanna launch. So we're going to start by uh, creating a new node block from this, uh, from this example launch file, you'll see several of those in there. And even though I'm going to probably not use all that much of it, I'm just gonna grab a whole copy of the filter transform VLP 16 front node that's in here. And I'm gonna paste that into my generate launch description function definition. Uh, for editing or for viewing, uh, use gedit. Um, that's probably the easiest one. So gedit space the file name. So um, yeah, so I've got I've got three files open right now. I've got the new launch file that I'm creating, the example launch file from uh, source launch autoware auto, or source launch autoware demos launch, and then the um, the CMake list file from data speed DBW Ford can. So um, I was using that to find the uh, node name. And then I copy pasted uh, the filter transform VLP 16 front block from here into my launch file into the generate launch description function. So now we're going to edit a bunch of the stuff in this uh, in this node block. 
So we're going to rename this to uh, data speed Ford DBW. Yeah. Uh, in the example launch file in, over in um, uh, source launch auto or demos, it's the um, Okay, so rename the uh, the Python variable for the node name. And then the executable is going to be that other name that we just found in the CMake lists file. So it's dbw underscore node. The name is just any generic name that we want for this specific node. So I'm just going to get rid of this and call it data speed for dbw node. Feel free to call it whatever you want. The namespace is the prefix that we want to give to this node and all of its topics. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to call it uh, dbw. So the node itself will be launched as slash dbw slash data speed for dbw node. Uh, we're not going to tie a function to the on exit, so you can just get rid of this line. And then the package is the package that this node exists in. So that's uh, for uh, DBW Ford can. The parameters that we're going to pass to it is going to be a uh, parameters file that we're going to get. So remove the filter transform uh, param that's listed in there now. And we're going to call the get param file function in here to look up a new param file that we're going to create. So you do get, oops, get param file. And then for this function, you pass in the, the package name. Um, and in this case, it's actually going to be our package. So in single quotes, use autoware bootcamp, or uh, sorry, bootcamp launch. And then it needs the name of the file, which is going to be the config file that we're going to create. So it's going, uh, we can call it um, DB, uh, dbw params dot yaml. And then close parentheses. Uh, we don't know right now any of the topic names that this node is going to produce, so we can get rid of the remappings, and we'll add it back if we need to remap any of those topic names for now. So get rid of the remapp remappings, and then this close parenthesis bracket down here, make sure you get rid of the bracket because we removed the opening bracket for that. And then to get our node to actually launch, we need to add this variable that we created for the node to the launch.launch .launch description. So you'll get rid of container and put in data speed forward dbw. Um, and I actually just realized that this is uh, saying that we want to return an object of type launch.launch .launch description. 
but we haven't imported that anywhere at the top of the package. So we need to add uh, a, either an import line or a from line in order to get that into the, pack, uh, the Python file. So add another line in your imports from launch import launch description with a capital L and a capital D. And then because we are importing the launch description object itself and not the whole launch namespace, we have to get rid of the, the launch dot in the beginning of the return statement. Sorry, sorry, what? Uh, oh, here, gotcha. Uh, actually, uh, that's something strange in Python. When you're creating a list, the last one can have a comma after it, and it doesn't care. <laughs> but, uh, but it's a good catch anyway. <laughs> Um, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to stick to the to the standard naming convention instead of the one that this package used. So the um, uh, this one sets up file path to be uh, os.path.join, get package share directory package name, and then it uses the folder name param. But the the stand the raw standard uh, folder name for that is config. So we're going to replace param with config here. And then the import launch substitutions should be fine. That should all be good. So the this is going to um, create a launch configuration object called params. And then it's going to pass uh, the file path that we got from up here as the default value for it. That should work. So go ahead and save that, uh, that param file. Okay. All right. You have now written your first launch file. <laughs> Yay. All right. Save and close that for now. Uh, and then we're running a little over for what I currently had scheduled. So I think we can break for uh, 45 minutes to an hour for lunch. You guys cool with that? All right.